Now we're going to continue to define the electromechanical coupling coefficient in terms of a mechanical uh, construction. So we have a piezoelectric material, and we pull on it, and it gets bigger, and the stored energy, uh, or rather, sorry, the input mechanical energy, is equal to one half a. L over S. D this time. Because here, when we're applying this force, we're both storing electrical and mechanical energy, you know, due to the charges and the extension of the material. But in this case, uh, this force, it only feels resistance. So both of these kind of electrical and mechanical terms are put into SD. Um, and that's why it just feels stiffer because you're, storing, you're charging two energies for every unit strain we're doing we are storing both electrical and mechanical energy so it just feels like it's tighter so it kind of feels stiffer so this multiplied the strain squared now the converted electrical energy is equal to one half epsilon x c uh, times a L times the electric field squared. And in this case, we're using the little x, the, the permittivity under constant strain. Uh, but we look over here, and look, it's not under constant strain. We're actually pulling it, and it's actually getting bigger. But this is because, look, we're using an energy term. And the energy developed by this electric field and these charge separation, it's not causing strain this electric field is not causing strain and because this electric field is not causing strain we have to assume that this is a you know uh, a constant strain parameter due for the energy so before we continue we need to simplify this because you know as you know from before we're going to put one of one of these you know if we're going to put this term on top of this term and we're going to want things to cancel out so we, we have this electric field term, which is not going to cancel out with the strain. Like we saw before, we wanted the strain electric field to cancel out. So we're left with just pure properties. So in a material such as this, we know that the polarization uh, is equal to the d times x. We know that the polarization, if you divide it by the permittivity under constant stress. Now this is a little confusing part. Before we use a permittivity under constant strain, now we want to find the electric field, which is permittivity under constant stress. And we did, look, we did apply a constant stress to get this electric field. But the energy stored in the electric field is determined by this equation with this parameter, which is a constant strain. So although we are, you know, in the same equation, we're going to be using two different types of uh, dielectric permittivities. And this is because we're trying to accomplish and describe two different things. One, we're just trying to describe the electric field here. And the electric field is due to that stress. And here, we're trying to describe the uh, energy. And the energy, the, the real stored electrical energy in this case, is only due to the uh, permittivity under constant strain. Because this electric field is not causing a strain. So if you continue here, we have electric field now equals d x over e uh, capital X. I'm going to start doing this now for the capital X part. Um, so this means capital X. So basically, now we still don't. We still have we have electric field, but we have we need. See, we need strain in this term. So we have our old equation here you know, the equation that works for any material, except in this case, we're using the di uh, constant dielectric displacement one uh, because we are have no leads, no power supply uh, on there. So if we rewrite this equation, uh, using strain, 
uh, we can identify the following relationship. So we have um, x over SD equals this. Therefore, the electric field is equal to D over that times x over SD. And if you plug this into the equation, which we'll be doing soon, so we, now we know that k squared is equal to uc over ui, just like we did last time, except now we have the equations coming in a little bit different way, but I'm going to claim that in the end they're going to be equivalent. Sorry, I'm running them backward. So the converted energy is the electrical energy. And we're not going to write electric field. Rather, we're going to write this part right here, which is d x e. No, that's under constant stress. S D, and we're going to square this term. All over one half E, or sorry, one half A L S D X squared. And after canceling all of the terms out simply, uh, we get the following relationship. Where we have d squared over sd ex over e squared. And I mentioned that, you know, going from electrical to mechanical. We have the same coupling coefficient related these relating these energies. We have the same coupling coefficient. So that means this term right here was equal to the other term which we described earlier. Where we had S E and E X. So these two terms are equal. And we'll be describing how are they equal in the next um, in the next uh, video. Thanks for watching.